Hey, what's going on, everybody? Kenan here, and we are live for another live show. What's happening? Been a cool week, lots going on, and uh, I'm pretty excited to be with you today because tomorrow is our first uh, hashtag Camp Kenan show on YouTube where it's actually you guys. You guys are going to be highlighted on our channel. We're, uh, we've been getting some great videos from all of you out there. Uh, showing us your setups and what you do to make your life your animals lives more interesting and exciting So we're pretty excited to bring that to you tomorrow on our YouTube channel uh, Pretty pretty stoked that you guys have joined the uh, I guess everyone kind of created their own hashtag to the Cam Cannon Army Which I kind of like it's a lot of fun um, as long as we're uh, fighting for truth justice and the betterment of reptiles lives and animals lives then that's great we got Solomon hanging out here today. He's going to be uh, hanging on the iguana here this afternoon. Maybe we'll get him fed. So let me know when he starts to wander off because I was put him up here earlier and he just took off. Uh, so pretty stoked, man. Uh, also, guys, just a few more things to get underway. And that is uh, if you're interested in Camp Cannon t-shirt, you may go ahead and head to the Camp Cannon store, campcannon.com to order one. Plenty of sizes available for you and I'll ship them out personally. Uh, also have sulcata tortoises available. Let me show you. We got sulcatas, redfoots, cherry heads, all available right now. These guys are $90. The sulcatas are $90 plus shipping. Shipping is $55 east of the Mississippi and uh, $65 west of the Mississippi. We have little cherry heads as well. Uh, they're $200 plus shipping. Shipping is the same. Shipping is the same up to four tortoises. So that's pretty cool too. Um, you guys can go ahead and order by sending me an email to campkennon at gmail.com. There you go, man. Got all the business done. Today I thought I'd answer some questions about how I got involved in reptiles, how I got started, because it's a very popular question and a lot of folks email me. They want to know how to get involved, how to start. How did you learn so much? Um, you know, I'm kind of self-taught. I it's kind of a true story. I believe in education. It's very important, but I don't necessarily believe that, you know, if you're not serious about college, then what good is college? You know, uh, you have to be serious about your education, however that may be. So uh, my life brought me along a, a kind of line where I was given an opportunity to ride BMX bikes and travel the country. And I did three semesters of college and I took this opportunity and it led me to an interesting life uh, in sports and then broadcasting and now doing the Camp Kennan stuff, which was always my first love, which was reptiles. Um, but I'm just basically saying, and I don't want to anger any parents, if you are serious and your career needs college, then by all means go to college. Just be serious about it. Um, but if you can get an education um, you know, on your own, which is kind of what I've done, and and make sure that the information that you're receiving is good then that's the way to do it as well I want to say what's up to ryan williams man thanks so much for your donation and uh yeah a lot of people out there man uh we got people from denmark alexander rosdahl what's up viking friends up there in the north of europe i've been to denmark copenhagen we were doing some bmx races in 2007 prior to the olympics let's see if we can get solomon over here He's got really good claws, everybody, and I, I don't know. He doesn't like it when, oh, this is good for my stomach. Let me tell you. Ooh, easy. He gets a little nervous. See, he got a little nervous. He thought he was going to fall. So here's Solomon. Let's see if he's not too upset with me to eat a flower. Do you want to eat a flower? Oh, look at that. Come on, buddy. Have a flower. We'll just see. I think I upset him. Sorry, buddy. Maybe he'll feel better in just a little bit. But Solomon's my uh, monkey tail or prehensile tailed skink and he is actually found on the solomon islands out there in the pacific for those of you who don't know let's see come on dude you know you're always hungry there we go and they're herbivores as you can see and he's just going to eat this flower kind of scaring me a little bit let's see if we can move this guy over here somewhere let's go over here i just feel a lot better about it buddy if you come on over here uh so yeah man so we're going to let Solomon do his thing right there, and I'm going to get to it. So today I'm going to just talk about some of those things, and I'll be brief. I just want to give you some books that I'm really stoked on that helped me out. And the first one is the Practical Encyclopedia of Keeping and Breeding 
tortoises and freshwater turtles by AC Highfield. And uh, we'll go and switch it up over here so you guys can get a good look at this book right here. And there it is. So that is the first book. Uh, it's a really cool book, man. Uh, lots of, you know, descriptions on the species, what they eat, uh, some really cool stuff about keeping these animals healthy. Uh, I think that's important. A lot of illustrations uh, and great information about some of the diseases you may encounter with these animals. So definitely a cool book. All right. So that's the first one. So check that out. That helped me out. Second book about turtles, one that I have to recommend. If you guys can get this book, it's an older book, Turtles of the World by Ernst and Barber, by Carl H. Ernst and Robert W. Barber. See that one? Dude, this book has got almost every species of turtle and tortoise in it. It's a great book, and it's really, really um, thorough as far as the, the descriptions and uh, just some natural history on the animals as well. Pretty cool. So definitely check this book out. I just wanted to show you guys these things here, and then we'll get to a, a few more. And then the final book that I really think you guys should have is Keeping and Breeding Freshwater Turtles by Russ Gurley. Russ is a great guy, member, a founding member of the Turtle and Tortoise Preservation Group, and uh, he's a good friend, and this book helped me out a lot. And it was cool because later on I was able to uh, – hang out and meet with Russ and we become pals. So that's always cool. Let's get back to that wide shot guys. And I'll start answering some questions here. Uh, let's see some questions, some questions. Uh, what advice would you give me to start my own camp? I own eight acres of land to start with. This is Alec Hernandez. Alec, what's up, man? From California, I believe. And I do believe your California reptile on Instagram. So you guys check him out. Um, I've seen some of his setups. I believe you got a Greek tortoise from me a while back who is growing nicely. So Alec, um, you know, the advice, it's going to go to everyone. Um, it's kind of funny. You see, look at Solomon over here. He's just kind of munching down on some hibiscus leaves that I picked for him. Um, so here's what I'd say. I mean, I can only tell you what I've done in my life. So, you know, after I got done with riding BMX and I was done with television, um, you know, all the while, living here in Florida, I knew that I wanted to have these animals outdoors, I had a little place in Vegas, and I built this really big tortoise, uh, turtle pond. Uh, but Vegas is a desert, so water evaporates, and water costs money in Vegas. And it also gets very cold in Las Vegas. Um, I wasn't too pleased on that, and I knew I wanted to do more with my reptiles, so I hightailed it in 2004 to southern Florida. So basically how I got started was do the research, read, um, immerse yourself in this. Um, you have to be passionate about it. You have to want to do it because there's no money in it. Zero. It's, it's not like you're going to become a millionaire. I'll tell you how to become a millionaire if you uh, raise reptiles. Here's how you become a millionaire. Start with $2 million and soon you'll be a millionaire. You see what I mean? Then you'll have a million dollars because you're going to spend money. Um, you know, the, the thing of it is, is I think, Alec, you're on the right path because what I see you doing is starting small, which is exactly what I did in my first home. And, and prior to that, when I was a young guy like yourself with my, at my parents' house, started small terrariums. Then in the summer times in Long Island, I would take a kiddie pool and I sunk it into the ground and put a chicken wire fence around it. And that's how my first turtle pond began. Um, but this day and age, we have so much good information on these animals that you guys can do it in a much uh, cost-effective and healthier way for the animals. Um, guys like myself that are on YouTube, a lot of literature out there, so many good breeders, so many good, uh, I guess the term for it is herpticulturists um, that are out there figuring out how to keep these animals uh, healthy and happy. So, you know, I'd start like that. The next thing I would do is if you're going to go into an animal-related profession, uh, live within your means. Save your money. A lot of us get kind of tied up in buying things that we don't need, like a fancy car or, you know, I don't even know, man, things that just clothing you don't need and jewelry and nonsense just to impress other people. Um, I don't suspect a lot of you guys are like that, but live within your means. Keep your wants uh, at bay. If you really want a home with animals, 
then look to the future and save, 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 and learn about what it takes to buy a house. Uh, you know, don't spend money. I'm, I'm being dead honest. This is probably boring to a lot of you guys, but you've got to stay focused on the true goal. And what's really important, instead of material things, think of animals, you know, think about giving them a cool habitat and a place to live. Here's some more food for you, dude. Um, so that's, that would be my, you know, initial suggestion to you is to, to go that route, but it's immersion in that, in that world. If you think you're going to do this in a profession, go to college for it. Um, I would then build, you know, the most naturalistic habitats, buy a home with a lot of land and then learn how to create one of the best things that ever happened to me. And then I'm going to take another question. One of the best things that ever happened to me was not being, um, not getting the paycheck from TV anymore because it forced me to learn how to work with cement, lumber, you know, be a carpenter, electrician. All these things are very important when you are trying to build your own reptile sanctuary. I now can construct cages. I have the right tools. I can mix cement. It's a lot of fun too because it frees you, man. You're able to create. You don't need to rely on other people. And I'd say the sooner you can do that, the better. All right. So now we're going to move along and what some of the other questions we got here. Some people are texting in as well. Who could it be? Sometimes they text in the uh, questions, but here we go. Uh, let's see. Do all turtles carry salmonella heart attacks? Uh, no, I think we covered this last week real briefly this week. Um, in the seventies, people would buy a lot of baby turtles at dime stores, you know, just at convenience stores. And we didn't know a lot about them. So they put them in a little bowl where they ate and pooped and swam and salmonella grows in dirty habitats. They didn't have filtration. The turtle got overlooked. A little kid comes in, picks the turtle up, plays with it, puts it in its mouth. They get salmonella from the filthy conditions the animal's living in. Um, you know, I, I would say that, you know, the tortoises here um, live in clean conditions. So the chances for them to carry salmonella is greatly reduced. And that's why there's legislation on the table in certain groups that I work with, like the Turtle and Tortoise Preservation Group. They're trying to um, kind of overturn some of these laws that were made in the 70s when we didn't have the knowledge we have now. Uh, so that we can, you know, legally sell the babies, um, you know, as opposed to selling them just for educational or scientific purposes. All right. What advice would you give me to start my own camp, Alex? I already answered that. We're going back down. Oh, who did, who is this? Um, what's up, Kenan? Author from Brockton checking in. Do you have any plans to write a book of your own about Camp Kenan? We would all enjoy it. Author Diaz the third. Thank you very much, first off, for your contribution. I really do appreciate you doing that. That's a great question. I don't think I'm worthy of a book at this point. Um, I want to grow the camp more, kind of do more in conservation and have more of a story to tell. I mean, my stories, it's kind of fun, but um, I think I want to do a little bit more with animals and, and see where we can go. Um, I kind of look at these vlogs and I look at Camp Kennan on YouTube as a personalized story for everyone there because we're all taking this ride together. Um, you know, it's a... Uh, it's a fun ride and um, you know, every day brings something new and exciting. Uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, we're planning a trip to India for next year. So we'll be, we'll be going to India next year. Um, we did the Costa Rica trip. Uh, we have so many fun uh, events coming up this year that I'm really excited about. Number one is uh, Thai Parks Iguana Fest coming up in May, uh, later on in May. We'll be doing some videos from there. I'll be on hand at that event. Uh, to hang out with everybody and raise money for iguana and lizard conservation. And then I'm actually uh, one of the organizers for CrocFest this year. Uh, and if you guys are in Florida, please come check us out June 24th at the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary. Tom's going to be down. If I have to like pull him kicking and screaming, he's going to come down and we're going to film it. Uh, we're going to have a cool crocodile video coming up on the Camp Kennan channel. Because you know we love crocodiles as much as we love tortoises here. And um, like if I had favorites, it would be crocodiles, tortoises, lizards, snakes. Oh my, it's everything. Uh, but yeah, CrocFest, we're going to raise money uh, for the Cuban crocodile and the research going on around it. So please come hang out with us June 24th at CrocFest. I'll be on hand and I'll be the master of ceremonies. So thank you, Arthur. Um, we'll, be, we'll be looking maybe a book. I don't know, man. Um, let's see. Let's see. Well, JBC 3626, whereabouts of Florida? I live in the south of Florida where it's nice and hot. 
Uh, yeah, uh, somewhere in Palm Beach County. Uh, all right, man. Uh, Connor Curry, do I even lift, bro? Yeah, I guess so, but um, I'm not really, I, I hate the gym. I go there for an hour, I do what I gotta do and I get out of there. Uh, I just do it for health reasons. I'm not doing it to, uh, you know, turn into like, you know, Schwarzenegger or something like that. I just do it for health, but I do lift. I guess I lift things up and I put them back down. Mostly tortoises though. That'll do it. Uh, let's see. Is it okay? Jacob ha Holm Homeland. Is it okay to keep my Russian tortoise outside at night in Michigan in the summer? Well, Russian tortoises come from a place where it gets real cool. It's nice and warm in Michigan in the daytime, usually kind of in the 80s. I'd say yes, but, um, you know, they do hibernate those tortoises. The problem is, is that in Michigan, I know that it gets wet, uh, not quite as wet as this guy who peed on my phone. Thanks, Solomon. Appreciate that. Good thing it's in a life-proof case. But, um, you know, it gets wet, uh, and you don't want the, them to get cold and damp. Uh, it's like any tortoise. Cold and damp is bad news, so don't let that happen. If you can keep that from happening, then uh, by providing them an outdoor shelter where it stays dry, then the cooler temps won't affect them. All right, man. Uh, let's see. Anson Miz? Mize? I hope that's right. Um, what brand of mountain bike do I ride? I ride giant bikes. So I've been riding giant bikes for a long time. Um, my buddy who sponsored me for Specialized years and years ago, Moved over to Giant many years ago, and he was so cool. He, he uh, brought me with him. I think this lizard almost is going to walk on our, our keyboard and get things all screwed up. But, yeah, Giant bikes, I love them. And as far as BMX bikes, I've been riding. Uh, I, I don't really ride too much, but I have an S&M uh, black bike. It's kind of an older bike, but it's cool, and it still works. But I also like Sabrosa bikes. Um, they're a brand out of Orlando. So Giant and Sabrosa. Uh, are going to be the bikes that I really like to ride. All right, let's see, man. Uh, hey, what's up? Let's see. Francisco TXZera. I, I'm trying to say your name right, but hello, uh, Kenan. I'm a big fan uh, from Portugal. Maybe I'm the only sub that's uh, Portuguese. Possibly. First one I noticed, but nice to meet you. Um, would love to get on over there to that peninsula, the Iberian Peninsula. And, um, you know, hang out and see what's cooking. I know you got some tortoises down in the south of Spain there. And uh, it would be really cool to see them in their natural habitat, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da, who else? What's my favorite reptile? Jordan Hoffman. Jordan, man. Um, my favorite reptile. That's tough. It's like asking a mom or dad to pick their favorite kid. Now, I know my mom and dad's favorite kid. That'd be uh, my sister, Elizabeth. But anyway, um, their next favorite kid would probably be Diane. But um, anyway, I'm one of seven. Uh, it's hard to pick a favorite. But I love Nostradamus and Slinky very much and Guapo. Uh, they're the ones I interact with on, on a regular basis. I mean, I, I interact with them all. But they, they are very endearing to me. I love those three. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Hey, what's up, tall traveler? Watching from Saudi Arabia. It's hot there, man. I'll bet, brother. Thanks for... Uh, Hang out and keeping us safe and, you know, traveling the far, far flung lands, brother. It's good to see you out there. I'm glad. I hope you're safe. And, uh, man, you probably get to see a lot of cool stuff in the deserts out there. So snap some shots, put them up on Instagram or, you know, send them out to us. We'd love to show off uh, all you guys whenever you're out there doing something cool, man. Let me tell you, this hashtag Camp Cannon doesn't just have to be habitats in, in your home. Why don't you guys, we can do whatever we want. I mean, gosh, I'm kind of like the boss. Why don't we just, you know, give me some cool shots of animals in the wild. I love that too. So if you guys are out herping, take photos. Uh, don't collect from the wild and don't get in any trouble with fish and wildlife. But it would be really rad to see some animals that you guys have seen out there in the wild as well. Remember, camp, the hashtag Camp Cannon and hashtag Camp Cannon Army is going to be an ongoing thing. It's going to be a new little um episode on our channel every Friday and it's all about you guys and what you're doing. But here's what I would suggest. Let's try and educate each other. So if your, you know, if your dream is to be a YouTuber or a broadcaster, uh, why don't you practice with us, man? Tell us a little bit about the animal, practice talking on camera. We'd love to see it. It's very cool and it's a way to share our experiences with each other. And I love that because it's nice when we all get to, uh, get to, you know, kind of hang out with each other. 
Uh, Kazuru, man, don't be sad that you missed the start. I'm going to upload this and you can go back and watch right up to this very point and then you can stop. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see what else do we got here. Oh boy, lots going on. Lots of, how about Eric Garcia? Hi, Kenan. My baby still kind of sneezes often, but it seems healthy and willing to eat always. What could it be? I'm keeping it in 80% or less. Greetings from Mexico City, man. Hey, what's going on in Mexico City? That's a big darn city. One of the biggest in the world. Would love to get to Mexico. Lots of reptiles in Mexico. Love the food. Not sure if I can drink the water. I'm sensitive, but uh, I'd, I'd risk it. Anyway, um, you know, I don't know. It could just be a little, it, it depends. There's so many things it could be, and I'd be speculating, my friend. Um, I'm not sure where you got it from. I uh, could just have a little respiratory issue as long as it's eating and moving correctly. I wouldn't really worry too much about it. Um, but, uh, you know, keep an eye on him. Keep him in the proper heat ranges, and he should be fine. I don't think it's that difficult to do in Mexico City. I think it's kind of easy to keep things warm there. Um, but I do think Mexico City is at elevation. Not 100% sure. So it could be cooler. Not so sure. Uh, but as long as he's eating and moving, I wouldn't worry too much. Just keep an eye on him. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Where are we here? May 27, 28, Big Reptile, Mexico. Oh, that's cool. Right on, dude. Uh, Michael Pogmore, Kennan, you should try to connect with the BBC and see if you can meet your Sir, 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 Sir David Attenborough. I'd love to see you two together. Love your work. Ah, uh, thank you, Michael. I uh, love David Attenborough. That'd be a dream come true, man. Uh, let's see. Is newspaper an okay substrate for Herman's, uh, Herman's tortoise? No. Um, I wouldn't keep them on newspaper for very long. I mean, if they're little babies and you don't want the yolks to get dirty, um, I would do that for a little while. But no, they're going to want natural soil. Take um, What I like to take is repti bark and organic potting soil and kind of mix it all together, and then boom, you got yourself like a really cool uh, habitat for your little Herman's tortoise. All right, that's what I would do. Uh, da -da -da -da, let's see. Uh, Hussein Abdel Hakim is from Egypt. How you going? I'm from New York. Nice to meet you. Really cool animals in Egypt too. Would love to get there and do a few Camp Kennan videos, man. I would love to see the pyramids, the Sphinx, uh, and you know, I'd like to do my best Indiana Jones impersonation and try and find the staff of Ra in the Well of Souls. Do you know what that is? You guys might be too young. Go watch Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Good stuff. Lots of cool lizards in, uh, in uh, Egypt. One of them, the Euromastic. So, hey man, take some photos of some cool lizards and hashtag us, okay? We'd really be psyched to see them. Uh, all right, let's see, let's see. Um, hey, let's see, I'm gonna go back here. Does anyone else have a question? Ah, D. Jack, Hypo Tortoise episode. Funny you say that. Funny you say that. I actually just recorded a little bonus video that'll be coming out in a couple of weeks about the uh, baby hypos and Darth Maul. So uh, I think you guys will like that. Just a quick video to say what's up and see what's going on. Uh, will I ever work with spider tortoises? Satya Surapropa Nada. I am just butchering the names today, but um. I don't think so. Um, spider tortoises, I never say never, like someone else I know. But I, I would, um, I hesitate because, you know, they're very delicate species. And, you know, to be perfectly honest, I travel so much doing all this um, that my prime objective is to kind of get out there and see animals in the wild. It would be cool to see spider tortoises in Madagascar. That would be pretty rad. But I'm not planning on it. However, it might be time for us to do a show on them, and I know a few people working with them. So it might be a good excuse to get out there and highlight the spider tortoises, because they are really amazing. Small species, but beautiful. Uh, let's see, Daniel Halsey. Hey, Kenan, what do you think about my Russian tortoise's name, Vladimir Putin? Hey, man, uh, pretty fitting. As, is he a jerk? Is he running around beating up uh, you know, other tortoises? I don't know. Um, just, uh, you know, that sounds like a good name. Um, it's better than, uh, who's that other guy? Hold on. I'm having a brain fade and I really want to get this famous Rasputin. There you go. Rasputin is another good name. Um, but he was a monk and, uh, he was involved in the, uh, I believe he was involved in the overthrow of the czars. I got to brush up something with Anastasia and all that. See information. Good books. Very good. Keep reading. 
Uh, let's see. Will I ever get more Galapagos tortoises? Connor Pitchford. Hey, man. I'd be down, dude. I, uh, I, I would never say no to another Galapagos tortoise. If it came my way, I would make the room, build a new enclosure, whatever I have to do. I love Galops. Uh, my buddy Jason Abels is doing a great job with John Heidecker and his other partner who is silent. But they uh, are doing beautiful work with the uh, Galapagos tortoises down in Miami. Uh, and then Robert Bloom out in uh, Arizona has got beautiful habitat. And of course, uh, the Fife's are really kicking butt. Richard Fife is doing well with his Galops. Uh, you know, so those guys are doing great work with Galapagos tortoises. Uh, Ryan Muller, know of any rhino iguanas available? Not right now, but you can always check out good old Ty Park. He'll be getting babies soon. I'll be getting babies soon. Uh, so look, look for rhinos to be available in September. Uh, great lizards. How many common snapping turtles do I have? The, wait a minute. Is that really your screen name? Turtle? The turtle rapist. Oh, turtle rapist. Okay, cool. Turtle rapist. He must rap a lot about turtles. Um, I have about four, uh, four of those guys. And, uh, you know, I like it. I like them. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brian Johnson. How about a drone view of my property? We, uh, we have that. That's for my buddy Tom to uh, cut together and show off. We're going to wrap things up here pretty soon, guys. Um, let's see. Uh, George Turner. I'm on two and a half acres, mate. Uh, okay, how about, how about, let's see. Aloha, Cannon Wolfie 1522 AJ. Is it all right to keep a Cuban rock iguana outside all year round in Florida? Also, what size cage would you recommend for a full grown Cuban rock iguana high from Hawaii? Aloha. Um, I keep my Cuban rock iguana out all year long, as long as uh, on the cold nights you have a nice heated shelter for it to go into, no drama at all. They like being outside. That's not too far away from their natural range. I'm about maybe 175 miles north of Cuba. So um, yeah, very good. And as far as you know, a size cage, 20 by 20, man, give them a lot of space. Uh, I like to give them a lot of space as adults. They like to walk around, they like to explore, they like to be enriched, climbing on things, on rocks, digging burrows, all that kind of stuff is gonna be important. So uh, let's see, what else, what else? Would I ever home crocodilians in the future? Uh, of course, I used to have them, um, but I, my buddy Kyle does such a good job at his facility, and I live so close that it's more fun just to let him feed them and have that bill, uh, and I'll just go over and help him out as needed. So that's, that's kind of fun for me. And then uh, the work at Bush Wildlife Sanctuary uh, gets me hands-on with crocodiles and alligators a lot. So I'm pretty happy about that. And then, of course, uh, whenever my good friend Lonnie McCaskill is down here in Florida and has some kind of interesting crocodile work to do, uh, I always tag along and, uh, along and learn a lot from him. Plus Ken Alfieri out there, some good croc guys, Greg Graziani, lots of cool peeps out there doing stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, Kevin Wu, Kelvin Wu, thank you so much, mate. Um, is dried food good for baby sulcata? You're from Burma? No doubt, man. Unbelievable. Thanks for uh, contacting us. Uh, Kelvin, it depends on the dried food. I do use Missouri tortoise diet for the babies from time to time. I mix it in. The Zoomed grassland tortoise diet is very good as well. Uh, never dog food or never cat food. Too high in protein and animal matter. These are herbivores. What I do is I soak that food and then I mix it in with some of the vegetation that I feed them. And this way they get a, a well-rounded diet. Now, every once in a while I get busy and I got to get them fed. So I'll just mix up some of the dried food with some water, mush it all up, and then put it in their enclosure and they'll eat it. No drama. So as long as you're not just feeding one thing all the time, the dried food is not bad at all. It's good in, in, in a quick fix if you have to go somewhere. It's good if you mix it in a little bit at a time. Just never rely on one thing all the time. I hope that helped you out, bud. Uh, let's see. Hey, Muriel, Mizeo, my friend is escaping. Hey, you're right. He's down on the floor, which means it's probably time for me to wrap things up here, everybody. Again, these live shows are just an opportunity for us to get together and have a uh, rap session, you know, like the turtle rapist. Um, it's really cool. And uh, I like it because I like to talk to you guys, um, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. So please, uh, these live videos are just that. That's all they are. You know, sometimes I'll be able to get us to a, uh, another location and we'll do some fun stuff live. 
if I'm going on an adventure like we did a few weeks ago with good old Fred Grunwald, where he almost got eaten by a Nile crocodile. Uh, so that's what this is all about. Um, we got plenty more videos. Don't forget tomorrow, we're going to have you guys on camera. Uh, your videos are going to be uh, displayed on the channel, and we'll cut together a few of them. And I'm really excited to see uh, all your videos. So thanks so much for joining in the hashtag Camp Cannon, hashtag Camp Cannon Army. And uh, we're getting things going, man. Lots of fun. Hold on, somebody. Ash Ned, which small species of tortoise do I like the best? Thank you for your donation. Uh, your contribution to the channel is greatly appreciated. What small species of tortoise do I like the best? I love cherry heads. I love the elongated tortoise. Greek tortoise, but the best, the best. Which one do I like the best, you ask? I'll tell you what, I'll show you. I really love the Greek tortoises because I do well with them. I hatch them out. They're cute. They're little. We're going to switch to this. Uh, where is my lizard? Oh, boy. I got to find the lizard before the cats do. Uh, let's see here. Give me one second. We're going to sign off with a little baby Greek tortoise. How's that, everybody? There's a little guy. He sees umbilicus, uh, the yolk sacs being absorbed right now. Uh, really, really cool. Um, Carla Newhouse, I'm going to try and grab my skink. Don't you worry. Uh, hello. Who is that from New Zealand? Oh man, I'm sorry. I, I missed it, but you're from New Zealand. Hey, Jasmine Stewart. What's up? How you doing? Thanks for hanging out with me. So look at this little guy, little Greek tortoise, pretty little tortoise. He's only a few days old, everybody, about a week old. So, um, I love these little ones here and the little Greek tortoises are 200 plus shipping again, $55 east of the Mississippi and then $65 west of the mississippi all right everybody thanks so much i really do appreciate it it's always a lot of fun i am uh excited because tonight i'm going to tacos like i said i like mexican food i'm getting some tacos tonight pretty happy about that so right now i'm gonna gonna sign off and um say good night to everybody and that's that i gotta find this lizard though hold on a second what's going on here i think i may have found him this was zeus's uh shell this was a big sulcana named zeus who got while i was in australia he got um killed by a 90 pound sulcata lumpy uh lumpy battled with him and he pierced his shoulder and he died from infection uh, it was kind of sad but let's see hopefully there's a lizard in there and there is whoa hey man don't you dare bite me dude here we go see this everybody oh boy I got to get this guy going. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon. This is Ken and signing off. Don't forget tomorrow to check out the channel. And by the way, thanks to everybody for uh, helping get us over 100,000 subs. Really do appreciate it, everyone. All right. I'm off. Time for the tacos. It's Taco Thursday, people. See you later.